did yeah uh, sky must not have got a, a break uh go ahead martok and, and take care of sky you don't need to clean up messes but um so garley tells you that uh you know come and come and visit with me on the morrow and out the door he goes Sure. See you tomorrow, Garley. Uh, and uh, Wachowski. Mm-hmm. You just chilling? Yep. When you first came out here and the speech was going on, uh, there were a few people who re remained behind in the beer garden. Several of them went inside. And then eventually they all, you know, some of them drifted back out. And uh, there's people just standing here and there. Anything in particular you're looking for or uh, looking to engage in? Nope. Just avoiding having to tell stories of how we slew the mighty whatever we slew. <laughs> and, you know, just uh, not in the mood to, <laughs> to have that conversation 50 times. Ah, the smart one. Kendall's stocking up. I'm just kind of waiting on Elosius to come back. And I'm looking for something that, uh, you know, I don't have, I haven't had a need for this yet, and I'm surprised, but uh, there's something that I don't have set up yet, and... Uh, now I can't remember how to, how do you add languages? How do you mean? Like to the chat, like you can, uh, you know, speak in different languages and it's understood by certain people. Hmm. It's just uh, above the mean... chat line. Oh yeah. You mean you bubble. mean you are missing a language in the in the chat? Um, yeah. Uh, I... List box of yes. Language? Missing a language in so the list to, box. To add... Yeah. So to add the language to the to the table. You use the, the cog for the options, and you have the languages button at the bottom left of the options. There it is. Thank you. And you can edit the list and add the new language and choose the, the font. Yeah, I forgot they didn't include that, so. All right. All right, Ren, are you back? Yeah. Okay. So well, you're hanging out there, and uh, you see a, uh, a pretty well-dressed guy, and he walks up to you. And you don't have that on there, so...
how it works. And he looks at you. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. And then he says in, uh, in common, he says, you know, the scaly one. And he smiles. Uh, he just kind of giggles and uh, turns around and walks off and uh, and he heads off inside. Uh, let's see, where are you guys at? Okay. More fracks. Yeah. You are standing here. And uh, this guy comes walking up to you. A rather dashing gentleman approaches. His smile quite charming. And he says, uh, you must be the heroes. And he hands you a small, crudely carved wooden figurine. He says, I'm here to solve a problem for you. But you have to realize it will be in my best interest as well. Say... Under what mountain? A 20% interest. Oh. You are so stuck. Twenty percent of what? <laughs> what did he hand you? Some sort of figure. Yeah. Crudely, crudely carved wooden figurine. And he says, uh, "Say a twenty percent interest." I think you should find that uh, as fair as it gets. He says, "We can talk more tomorrow." Twenty percent of what? Twenty percent of nothing is still nothing. He said, um, "You've you've seen one of these before." Um, I sorry if I have. I don't yeah, remember. yeah. Sitting on the table in front of Chiseltooth, where he was carving these wooden figurines with his teeth, if you remember right. Oh yeah. Looks the same. Crudely carved. More like an ugly little voodoo doll. So he's got ah, so he's got some information for us. He says, "I'm I'm here to solve a problem for you, but you have to realize it'll be in my best interest as well." Say twenty percent. I think you should find that as fair as it gets. And, it depends. Uh, he says, "We can talk more tomorrow." There are many legends being okay. born on on this wind tonight, and I do not wish my name associated. In my line of work, discretion is best. And he turns and walks away, calling to to uh, a yellow pie, the guy who uh, you know runs the city, the uh, minister of trade dollar. And he greets him as if he's an old friend. Okay. Well, that chap over there by the table, he's my chief negotiator. And uh, he just nods to you and walks away, and he goes to talk to uh, the. Uh, Minister of the city. You're not as convincing as me when you lie. Exactly. I don't negotiate well. He's a honorable, noble lord. You did take uh, noble for background, didn't you, Morfrax? I did. Good. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, your family's probably well known around here.
a noble knight. Anyway, you watch this guy. And he talks to uh, Yellow Pie, and he talks to a few other people. And before you know it, he's just gone. Nowhere in the room. Do we know his name? No. Mm -hmm. If it's about the letter of credit, uh, Stephanie Alosius is back. Yep, I'm good at negotiating about that. Look what happened last time. Exactly. Okay, so the party eventually starts to wind down. Uh, how long do you guys want to hang out here? We'll say it's uh, it's uh, 5 p.m. I mingle? guess uh, Kendall has uh, sufficiently uh, stuffed uh, himself. <laughs> there are still important people around. Uh, yeah, I don't know if there's any anything you want to do while you're here, or if you've got an idea. And you do have a very, very heavy gold statue that belongs to you sitting in here. Do we still have uh, the coach uh, waiting for us outside? Yeah. If you go out and look. Uh, I mean, if you could go ask the uh, the valet if, uh, you know, do I have uh, a coach here? And he would tell you that, yes, just let him know and he'll call one around. Okay. Well, I'm finished here, unless anyone else wants to do anything. Yep, now you've done well. I knew what I'd done. <laughs> You've become the leader of a great adventuring company. That's how I was killed off. Right. The uh, I, I show Lucius the uh, the card figure as well. He's coming around tomorrow. Okay. Is this one of them things that that chisel tooth was chewing? It looks like it. Oh, I ain't touching it. Showed it to you. So you have to touch it. Okay. I'll let you carry the golden horse. Oh, yeah, I can do that. And I'll walk over to the golden horse and pick it up. Does anybody stop me? 300 pounds, but you'll be right. Can you pick up 300 pounds? Is that how heavy it is? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Thick. Um, That's what I was <laughs> So uh, no, I can't. Morf I'll try. As, as a laugh as you try and pick it up and do your back in. <laughs> uh, okay. So uh, I'm sorry. I'm laughing at that. Uh, Can I smash it? Break it up into little pieces. <laughs> Gold. Yeah, it's gold. I mean, you could whack on it if you wanted to, but uh, I don't know about breaking it up. And Idik, Idik walks over and he says, uh, would you like us to have it delivered? Yeah, if you can melt it down, it'd be even better. Oh, he just scowls at you. <laughs> Hey, why don't we have it uh, have it delivered to the uh, Blue Mountain Shadow as a joke? Wonder how long it'll take him to get it there. Not that I'm with you at the moment. <laughs> oh yeah, there's an idea. Because technically, we own it. Yep. Hey, why don't we build like a helipad for the uh, for the ship for the for the airship? And then it wouldn't be such a pain to get there and back. Yeah, what did it take you? About three days? 
to traverse well, the on whole the distance. Ship? Yeah, I think it was three or four days to get there. It took you a month to travel across the pass to get there. Of course, it was snowing, and there were other issues that held you up. Or it's a couple of weeks, anyway. And he just well, at the moment, we've got a letter of credit for 50 grand, and then we've got the deed to the Blue Mountain Shadow for a quarter of a mil. Yeah, until one of us can successfully look like the life nut, there's no point in. No point in um, trying to pay that forward, is there? To be fair, no. Because everybody has told us basically it's not going to work, so we need a... Uh, we need a hat of disguise or some shit. Hey, Mokri, can you cast disguise self? Although you'd be um, a really no, short version I'll of the life now. Burn you alive if you want that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the fire. Rain, rain check. The Leifner was not a burn victim. Are we aware of uh, uh, what? Uh... Uh, the guy uh, told to um, to Morfrax, uh, the dashing gent. Yeah, I've told Alosius about the car thing, and obviously I told you all about the other chat with the uh, woman. Because uh, we have a lead there. And I guess twenty percent is a reasonable request. Could be. But I would very much like to know who the guy is, actually. Yeah, he didn't give his name, but we're meeting him tomorrow. Is there uh, something maybe written or carved uh, under the little uh, uh, thingy? You mean on the on the figurine? Yes. Any kind nope. of indication of a, a place to meet or anything like that? Uh, no. Uh, but give me. Yeah, you guys give me a perception check. Okay, Losius. Good enough. With that, you can kind of see that this wooden figurine might might be a dragonborn. You're not quite sure. It's crude. But other than that, there's no markings on it. Just, uh, you know, looks like gnaw marks or whatever from where Chisel Tooth has carved it. When did you post for this in Morfrex? Oh, last week. I didn't know you did nude modeling. Modeling. Big grin on my face. Mm. I see it's anatomically correct as well. Hang on, I'll get my magnifying glass out. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> How's your back? Still there. So, uh, are you going to have, uh, have, uh, Ittig deliver your golden draft horse someplace? <laughs> Blue Mountain Chateau. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe uh, let's begin with uh, the side door tavern. Garginoogle is probably a safer place. Yeah, that is true. He says, well, I can surely do it. Is that your final answer? Yeah. Yeah, yeah gar garlic is good. 
Okay, so uh, he leaves, comes back. He's got a couple of big burly porters with him again, and they pick this thing up, and they carry it off through these uh, rear doors. You have now in your possession, so you can leave it in the party sheet if you want, or I, I would suggest leaving it in there because of the weight. Yes. Yeah. Um, and uh, more and more people begin to drift out the doors, some of them uh, quite festive. Have a nice evening, ladies and gentlemen. And the few left, they wish you all a good night. Good night, night. And Kendall, uh, Kendall looks around and says, uh, Hey, uh, did you see uh, Wachowski? I haven't seen him since we got in here. Oh, well. I'm okay, going Anything you want to do, guys? Yeah, let's go to the um, side door. All okay. right. You make it back to the side door. Hey, Master Kellogg, any message for us while we were uh, away? He says, no, no one's come. It's been real quiet, though, with the feast. How was it? It was a okay. horse. Yes, your names will be celebrated forever. I'm going to go to bed. Mm. Then we'll set out in the morning for or set out in the next couple of days for this um, temple, shall we? Yeah. So we've got someone meeting me tomorrow. Lucius, about this carving. So what time okay. were you, what time were you guys going to bed? What time in the evening is it? I don't know. I'm I guess it's, it's still about seven uh, o'clock. Right the beginning of the evening. That's, yeah, probably six o'clock by the time you get back here. I'll have a drink, a couple of drinks, but I will retire at about nine. Okay. Boy, an old fart. Okay, so... Uh, How does my face uh, feel at the moment? Uh, there's no burn to it anymore. The mark is definitely there, though. I mean, it looks almost like you've been branded, so... It's it's embossed on your face. It's it's raised up, um, but it's not red like like a brand would be or a scar. It's more of a very deep gray, almost black. Okay. So you guys are sitting here yeah. eating, drinking. Uh, you said you're going to bed about nine o'clock. Uh, about an uh, hour and a half after you arrive, two people come in. Wachowski, you see one of them. Uh, you recognize him as the finely dressed gentleman that uh, approached you and spoke to you there in the beer garden. And more fracks, the rest of you guys um, that saw him, you recognize him as the gentleman that handed you 
the uh, wooden figurine, and he's got somebody else with him. Uh, an older fella, uh, fairly unkempt. Uh, not that his clothing are threadbare, but um, just someone that doesn't really spend much in way of their appearance, spend much time on it. And Morphrax, he catches your eye. You catch his eye, and he walks up to you. I throw a glass eye at him. You throw a what? Glass eye. He caught, the gla caught me eye. Oh, God, you threw a glass eye. Okay. I thought you said you threw a glass at him. I'm like, okay, here we go. No, no, glass eye. <laughs> he says, uh, he walks up to you and he says, well, is it tomorrow yet? Beg your pardon? He says, see me tomorrow. He says, uh, he, he says, is it tomorrow yet? And he's got a kind of a sly smile on his face. And, uh, he said, uh, he says, I, I like to think there's no better time than the present. Okay. And he said, he says to you, he says, uh, so let me ask you a question. The name on the certain document that you have that is entitled to certain gifts. Do you know this person? Yeah. And you have seen their face. Briefly. Yeah. And he looks to the uh, the spindly little old gentleman beside him and he nods his head and he turns back to you and he says uh, I don't really mean to be intrusive but if you'll just bear with us a moment and you feel a presence in your mind you guys see the the old man step around and look eye to eye of course, he's looking up into Morphrax's face. And Morphrax, you, you feel this presence in your, in your mind. And it's obvious that this guy is doing something psychic to you. And the visions of your encounter with the individual known as DeLaefner come vividly to the forefront of your mind and as you guys are standing there watching you see the finely dressed gentleman look he gets a rather glazed uh, look to his face and his appearance begins to change And you see standing before you the man that you know as DeLaefner. And then the presence that you felt in your mind, Morphrax, is gone. Right. You have to teach us how to do that. Uh, he looks at you and he says, if I could, I don't think I would, but I'm sorry, my friends, can't be done. Now, let us finalize this arrangement. Is there some place we can speak in more privacy? Upstairs mm -hmm. with the rest of us, yeah. Yeah, upstairs will be... Uh... In a quiet place. Okay, so you guys all go upstairs, and he wants to know the details. Uh, who has the document? When do you want? Do. Bless you. Okay, looks at you. He says, "When do you want uh, to make the withdrawal?" And how much are we getting for this? What's the value of the document? He says. 
50k. If he takes 20%, uh, it's, then 40k. It's clear. 40,000. Seems good enough. You people are wicked. No, no, we were just uh, leveling up uh, with uh, the bad guys who wanted to uh, take over uh, the realm by uh, uh, launching uh, undead attack. They're adventuring businessmen. So you guys are happy to let him have this and charge us 10 grand to swap it into cash? He, he, yeah. he holds his hand up and he says... I don't need the document at this moment. I won't need it until right before the moment I go to make the withdrawal. I suggest you meet one of you at least. Uh, one of you more discreet individuals and he looks at Wachowski. Hmm. And he says uh, <laughs> should uh, should meet me outside the uh, the customs house because I think a number like that they're the only ones who will have uh, the ability to make good on that letter seems okay yeah And he, he gets, he's all serious and, and he says, time frame, when does this happen? Tomorrow, before uh, we go. Do it tomorrow before we leave. 10 a.m. During business day here in Trade Dollar. Sounds good to me. Every day is a business yep. day in Trade Dollar. He says, very well. And he looks at you, Wachowski, and he says, uh, once the transaction's complete, Western Paddocks, and he gives you an address. He writes it down on a piece of paper. And from there, I wish to not see you again. And he walks out the door with the spindly old gentleman. What an ass. <laughs> Do I believe that he was being honest during this interaction? You can give me an insight check if you'd like. You know that he is going to... I mean, you, you feel pretty confident that, that he is going to go in and cash this thing for you and meet you and pay your money. Good to know. Um, so we have the address. Uh, yes, he gives you an address of a place in the paddocks. So it, basically what, he, what you guys have decided on is at 10 a.m. tomorrow, you will meet him uh, outside the customs house, which you passed on the way to, uh, to the feast today. And Wachowski is to give him the letter of credit. And then you are to go directly to this address and meet him there because he will be making the withdrawal immediately. Okay. Uh, I'd like to spend the evening uh, go doing some uh, recon uh, around the address uh, that we have uh, received. Okay. Not to... Uh, go inside the house or anything but uh, to know the the place in advance uh, uh, check if there are some uh, rear entrances uh, different ways in and out that kind of thing and places to hide around the uh, around the house just in case Okay, so uh, again, what was it? About 7, 7.30 all this takes place 
out the door he goes. Getting close to 8 o'clock, yeah. the sun has fallen behind the mountains uh, in the west, but it is still daylight and probably will be for another hour, hour and a half. Um, you guys make your way out to uh, the western paddocks by way of West Windle Way. And you come to uh, the address that he has written on this piece of paper, and it is a small It is a small, uh, can you see that circle? These are yes. just a, like a bunch yeah. of uh, yeah. probably rental properties, row houses. A couple of them uh, might be, uh, you know, offices that somebody has rented. Um, but most out here has to do with uh, dealing with freight and livestock and animals and, um, you know, the, the transient, uh, the migrant workers that come through on these caravans. And you come to that location, and it just appears to be an empty establishment. Mm -hmm. What about the houses uh, around it? Well, like I said, some of them are, are they're probably rental properties or, uh, you know, boarding houses, um, freight company offices. Uh, you know, you've passed a couple of farriers uh, that are shoeing horses. Um, you know, tack makers, and this is a the same neighborhood that you guys came to when you were shopping for. I think you bought oil. You mm -hmm. were actually looking for information on uh, on Thunder Rock Mine, the little gnomes that ran the shop there. Mm -hmm. Is there any uh, house uh, just around this one, which would be? Uh... Uh, empty at the moment as well, meaning uh, uh, let's see. not looking like it is uh, occupied during uh, during the. In the winter time, you'd stand a bigger chance of there being. Uh, let's say there's a twenty percent chance that you'll find within a couple of doors of this thing another building that uh, that might possibly empty be empty. So somebody give me a uh, percentile die roll, and you got about twenty percent chance. <laughs> All right, so you do. You find uh, a place. Let's say it's across the street in Caddy Corner. And on the front is um, an address to, to contact if you wish to rent this piece of property. Okay. Uh, I guess uh, the night has maybe begun, is maybe falling by now? Yes. Uh, could we uh, try to open a rear door so that tomorrow we have an entrance there? The 18 is strong with you. Uh, yeah, somebody could check to see if uh, the place is open. You look around quickly and discern that it is not. The, uh, the building of which uh, address you were given, uh, the front door is open on that and on the inside are a couple of chairs, and that's it. No furniture or anything else. Other than that, it's an empty okay. building. Mm -hmm. Okay, so no, I was thinking about the, the house that we found just across the street. Uh, it's locked get, up. Um, uh, a door uh, opened uh at the rear so that uh, we can enter this uh, place without uh, being uh, obvious from the street okay somebody like to uh break a door pick a lock try a window uh, and wakowski picks a lock front door back door wakowski uh, you just rolled another 18. <laughs> yes back I door i did he's cheating Back door. He picks the back door. Uh, again, this building is completely empty. Yeah, that's cool. And they're small. I mean, they're, you know, they might be 
20 by 20. Mm -hmm. well, the, the goal is just to have an observation post uh, uh, ready for tomorrow. Right, right. Morning. So yeah, you you perfect perfect place for observation point. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, uh, compared to this place, relative to this place, where are our horses uh, stabled? I don't remember. Uh, I think they're stabled near that north road someplace. We'll say we'll say they're right there. Okay, fine. Thanks. Okay, so what would you like to do from here? Well, I'm ready to uh, go to bed. Yeah, turn in for the night. You guys get back about nine or nine thirty, uh, making your reconnaissance, uh, getting things right. Turn in for the night. And unless there's anything else you would like to do, the night passes quietly. I'm going to get up early and go to that uh, uh, rendezvous uh, kind of early, about five or six o'clock. Get prepared in the in the house opposite. Okay. So the rendezvous point. Uh, go ahead, Mr. Furby. Qu question: uh, Where is the? Uh, what is the location of the? Uh, what is it? The customs office. Cus the customs house is. Right there. It is in the old city that has the wall around it. The old part of town. It's about. Uh, let's see. This is where. The Teamsters Hall is, where the arrow is, and just to the west is a red square where the Customs House is, mm -hmm. on the Street of Swords. Okay, so I'll go and uh, spend some time walking the streets in that general area. Tattooing for business. Let's see, I should Waiting be for the time to to see uh, the movement. There, I just made the uh, map pin shareable for Side Door Tavern. So you guys should be able to see that and have a reference of where that's at now. On Lonely Lane over there. Okay. So, uh, let me go down the list. Mokri, what are you doing this morning? Well, nothing in particular. Okay, just kind of following the rest of them. Losius, what is your plan? Uh, wake up and follow uh, the governor. Morfrax, you are going down to check out, and uh, you said early, so I'm a, I'm assuming sunrise, about 5 a.m., 5.30 a.m. Morfrax? Did we lose Spoon? Looks like it. Is he on his way to drop in? Maybe. There he goes. Yep. Yeah. But I think he I wanted to. We can... I yeah. guess we can take several minutes. Uh, last time uh, he he had to uh, relaunch, uh, restart Fantasy Ground when uh, uh, disconnected and reconnecting. That's right. You guys want to take a break then? Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, I'll queue up a 10 minute break. You're right. I think he had trouble launching it yesterday. All right. So we'll be back in uh, 10 minutes. Just come back into Discord. Okay. Maybe yeah, not. I'm back. I don't think you ever dropped from the table. Oh, yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah. No. My wonderful internet. Let me ask you, is uh, is your Fantasy Grants cooperating with you? It will be. Okay. Once good. it gets reloaded. Well, then we'll continue with the discussion for a minute. So, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Martok, you were going to go check out the front of the customs building. I'm following the governor. Okay. Wherever he's going, I'm following. And Wachowski. Hmm. I forget what I was supposed to be doing. You're doing the transaction while we're watching from the other house. Right. That's what I was supposed to be doing. All right. Uh, uh, yeah. Then, <laughs> yeah, I'll I'll make my way up to the house then. If you guys are in place and we are ready to go. Does anyone want to go with you? Nah, I'll be fine. Sure. Do you really got a signal if you get into trouble? You want us to rush across? Uh, I will scream loudly. Don't worry. There's practically no one who can get the jump on me in combat. I'll be out of there before anything happens. Okay. And then you guys can, you know, set them on fire like uh, well, like I say, want to do. Famous last a words. friendly kobold can set fire to the building just in case. Can I get uh, a proper uh, quiet observation post uh, in in the area of the custom? Uh, I mean. When you first get there in the morning, it's kind of quiet. Uh, the town is waking up. People are starting to go here and there. The customs office is not open yet. Um, I'm not sure what time of the morning is this. I mean, Morfrax, you went down to scout it out and, and kind of check the, you know, the area out. Yeah. Um, as you're looking around, I mean, you can imagine that there's going to be people all over the streets here, you know, when business resumes in a couple of hours. So blending in with the crowd might not be hard to do for some of you. I was thinking more of a kind of a small alley between two houses or something. Oh, sure. There's plenty of, uh, I mean, you know, you could. Because with my face, uh, otherwise uh, it would be better if I, if I were in the, in the blind house uh, where the meeting is uh, scheduled. So you're saying somebody should like camp out in one of these alleys uh, to watch Wachowski meet up with uh, the stranger? You don't. Yeah, I was thinking that we we should have some observation at both points, uh, the the meeting house, and uh, and the customs uh, house as well, to see if there is anything uh, weird going on around uh, one or the other. You guys just give me the plan. Let me know how uh, the 10 o'clock is. But who's going to be where at 10 o'clock? Well, I guess since Morfrax already went uh, soon in the morning to the to the house uh, uh, near the paddocks, I will try to find uh, an alley uh, uh, across uh, or not far from uh, from the customs house to uh, to have a look around. Here. Well, you could let's say this alley between these two buildings or perhaps uh, here 
There's plenty of places you could stand and be inconspicuous. Especially okay. with lots of people there. on the street. Yeah, I'll uh I'll turn up about fifteen minutes early to wait in the house. Just so I have a chance to case the joint, make sure it's not surrounded, you know. Do my due diligence. Okay, so now Wachowski, you're expected to be at in front of the customs house at ten o'clock. So are you telling me you're not in the house? Oh, did he want me with him? Well, you've got to give him the I'm letter. I'm so confused he, right now. Yeah, you've got to give him the letter of credit, and he said to meet him. Remember, he told you that he didn't need it last night. You know, he said, I, I just need yeah, it right before I, I walk know. in. Right. Okay, so the house is for a meeting after he yes. gets... Uh, yes. Okay. I uh, understood the reverse. But I'm meeting him at the customs house to give him the thing. Yes. Right. Okay, then I will do that. Okay, so at 10 o'clock, Wachowski is in front of the customs house and, and Kendall is over here in the alley. There are people all over the streets. Uh, Mokri, Olosius, Little John, Olosius, and Morfrax are... Uh, you guys are have went to the house where you're to meet them after the transaction. And at 10 o'clock sharp, a coach pulls up, and you see the person that looks like DeLeifner pulls the curtain back and looks out the window, and he looks up and down the street, and he spies you, and he motions for you to come to the coach. Sure, I will approach. And uh, he opens the door and he leans forward and he says, is everything in place? I suppose it is. And he holds his hand out, steps from the coach. And I will hand him the MacGuffin. Whatever it is, I'm, I don't think it's in my inventory. The uh, letter no, of credit. credit. Yeah, so I will hand him the letter of credit. Okay. And then I will say, I expect to see you soon. You will. You will, my good man. And uh, he uh, steps away from the door, and you see another gentleman step out of the coach, and he's very large very very big man and the two of them walk inside the customs house kendall you saw the whole thing yeah uh who's at the meeting point right now Alosius, mokri and morfrax yeah. are at the meeting point right mm -hmm. okay Sorry, that was my mistake. In the, in that case, then I'm going to uh, hide across the street, try and blend into the crowd from the uh, from the customs house, and then I'm going to watch them come out and then track them as they uh, as they go to the meeting point. Okay. At the meeting point. Uh, Morfrax, Olosius, and Mokri, who is where? You have two different locations here, one across the street and caddy corner from the other. Who is in the, who is in the meeting location and who is in the ob observation house? I'm in the observation house. I thought Olosius was going to go into the meeting room. Yeah. Uh, and Mokri and I are in the uh, observation. Well, does Mokri need to be with you just in case... I was going to be in the observation room watching the uh, front of the building just to see if anyone comes in and tries yeah, to I'll jump us. i meet in place. Okay. So, Wachowski and Kendall. Time passes, and 15 minutes turns into a half an hour, and a half an hour, 
turns into an hour. What and does the coach do during that time? It sits outside. Okay. And about an hour passes. And you see the gentleman who looks like the Leifner and his very large accomplice, or associate, I should say, who is carrying a rather large box and they head out to the coach and Wachowski and Kendall give me um, perception checks. Wachowski, they get into the, the coach, the door closes, the curtains pull back, and he looks out the window and looks directly across the street to you and makes eye contact with you and smiles. And the coach takes off down the street. Kendall, it passes you at the, uh, at the bend onto North Wall Street, and then it comes to the junction of Storm Warden's Way, and turns south and disappears down the street this way. I will follow it on foot, I suppose, because a carriage in a uh, carriage in a city can't be moving more than a light jog. Uh, yeah, you could probably let me look at something here. With a dexterity like that and uh, a fairly strong constitution, you wouldn't have a problem following a coach. Um, and basically, uh, you get to a point where the coach turns west onto West Wendell Way and starts heading this direction, crosses the bridge, and appears to be heading toward the... Uh, rendezvous kendall is headed this way uh are you doing that as wakowski takes off after the coach yep so about the time you get to the bridge you see the coach uh drive right past you the curtains are drawn so far so good so far so good the coach continues and you guys See it in the far distance right here. Uh, make a right onto this lane. Okay. You guys are back here now. Uh, Wachowski, I'll say I'll put you and Kendall together right there crossing the bridge. Uh, back at the rendezvous. You guys here and see a coach pull up out front. And the gentleman who met you at the festival and who at first walked into the side door last night steps from the coach. And with him steps a very, very large man. And he's carrying a very large chest, or not a very large chest, but a pretty good sized chest and are you guys going to do anything i think there's been no um movement in the in that building previously which will be you know Alo no ambush type no thing. Alosius is in that building yeah 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 okay yeah um i'm gonna once they've entered the building i'm gonna walk across and st and obviously be by that the entrance of the other building um, so that if I hear anything going off, I can rush in. Okay. Alosius, uh, he steps in, looks at you, and he has a, well, about a half smile on his face. And he says, this has been a very enjoyable afternoon or morning. And he steps out of the way and the large guy walks in 
sets the chest down and turns around and walks back toward the coach. Uh, Morfrax, as you start across the street, Mokri, are you with Morfrax or are you with Thelosius? Where was he at? Yeah, I'm with Morfrax. Okay. You guys start back across the street, and the big guy that walked in meets you on the way out, and, you know, he looks at you stone face, walks right past, and climbs back into the coach. And as you approach the door, you can see the guy. He does. He no longer looks like the Leifner. And uh, he bends down and he opens the chest. And on the inside of the chest, you see uh, several rows of platinum trade bars. Okay, any okay. problems? There's no problems on my end. And he starts taking his share out. Okay, and I watch him carefully. Make sure he does take just his share. And he does, and you now have 40,004 gold pieces in your inventory. And he says, gentlemen, it was a pleasure doing business with you. I agree. Thank you. And he puts his trade bars into a leather carrying case that he has, and out the door he goes. Climbs in the coach and down the road, off into the uh, sunrise. We need to deposit this somewhere safe, don't we, guys? Uh, I say we use some of that money and buy a bag of holding because yep. that's the only thing that's going to gonna hold all of this. Yeah. We also want to keep it somewhere safe as well. Or maybe like two bags of holding and split it between the two. Give one to the beefiest and one to... Um, I'd say the most responsible, but Candle looking like he does at the moment doesn't feel very responsible. That would be me then. No. <laughs> Rachowski then. Definitely not Mokri. Sorry, Mokri. <laughs> oh, come on. I... I like how the answer to me was no. <laughs> I, I don't I don't I don't trust you. <laughs> not as far as I could throw Gorch. And that is characters bleeding over, but <laughs> Rich in gold, not in spirit. Lucky halfling divination wizard. Oh, yeah, that's a pretty good point, Jenthro. Uh, so, you know, it's funny. You guys have been after this, and all of a sudden it's right here in your laps without complications. You know, uh, characters yeah, are always right. like, boy, if I just had 10,000 gold pieces, I'd do this or I'd do that. And, you know, when it's dumped in their laps, they're all kind of like, uh... We need a bag of holding. Yeah. Because ain't no way we're going to be able to carry this around. Um, I guess uh, after maybe uh, five or ten minutes, we can arrive uh, yes. in the place with... Uh, yep. Yeah. yep, you are there. And these guys are all standing around kind of Google-eyed at... Uh, and okay, and I say, okay, uh, I'll be back within uh, half an hour. I'm going to fetch the horses and saddle bags. Okay, let's go over to the, let's go back to where hideout building rather than stay in this one, just in case. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why Kendall's going to get the horses so he can carry it. Well, mm -hmm. yeah, no, but what I'm saying is we'll walk across to the other building rather than stay in the one where we met. That way, if, if we do a double cross and he sends in, like, I don't know, the, the watch guard or something to arrest us, we won't be there, will we? We want to hang around here. Okay. This chest weighs about, weighs about 400 pounds, just so you guys can take this into calculation. With, with uh, his take gone, it's still about 400 pounds. And, uh, you know, 
Elosius and Morfrax could probably pick it up and carry it across the street if you wanted to do that. Yeah, I think we should. Yeah, okay. Obviously, I can lift that with one hand. Okay, I take, uh, let's okay. say, a uh, hundred uh, gold pieces, uh, in, just in case. And I will go to the stables while they do that. And... Uh, out of your get ship. our horses and maybe uh, try to uh, try to get a cart. If I don't remember if we still had uh, our um, uh, two wheel carts, uh, so if I, if we still have one, uh, I won't need it. But otherwise, I have some money to purchase uh, some kind of wagon or cart. Uh, did you guys have two wheel carts? You had the wagons that the Teamsters owned coming back, the ones who. Uh... You know, but most of those wagons and stuff were burned. They had burned a lot of that stuff. So I don't remember yeah, you guys I'm buying two-wheeled sure. carts. Uh, not buying, but I was wondering whether we could salvage one of them when we went down uh, Blue Mountain Chateau. Otherwise, uh, no problem. I, I take 100 gold pieces to be able to purchase uh, something at the stables. Okay. Uh, you are in the right place for purchasing transportation and conveyances of all kinds. Uh, no, no place like the Western Paddock's a trade dollar. So whatever the price is on, uh, you know, any additional uh, draft horses, mules, donkeys, carts, wagons, whatever you want to buy, uh, is available here at the market price. which is whatever the price is in the player's handbook. Okay. Uh, tack harness and drone vehicles cost 15 gold pieces for a cart. That's what I find in the player's handbook. That works for me. So I'll get one cart. I guess for uh, how much? 300 uh, pounds. We only need uh, one of the horses and one cart, and that's okay. And I will make sure that uh, uh, the stables are uh, compensation, compensated for uh, taking care of our uh, horses for uh, another two weeks. Okay, so you just grabbed a horse and a uh, and a cart. Yeah, just one of the horses, one cart, which I purchase, and I uh, at the same time I pay for uh, the next two weeks of uh, of um, taking care of our uh, horses uh, at the stables. Okay, so you've. Uh taking care of some uh, bookkeeping. I guess uh, in total, maybe uh, that will have cost, uh, I don't know, uh, between the 15 of the cart and, and uh, the stabling of the horses, uh, 30 gold pieces maybe for two weeks or something like that. That'll work. And then I will make my way back uh, toward this uh, street. Okay, so... Um, whistling. Yeah, whistling. Uh, you guys see Kendall come up. He's got a cart and a horse. And Kendall, you find them inside the uh, lookout house. I just put the cart in the party sheet. Oh, you didn't want to carry that in your pocket? <laughs> well, if we can't carry the chest full of gold, we're not going to be able to carry a cart. <laughs> All right, so what do you do, rich adventurers? Carry the chest out to the cart and put it in it. Yeah. Uh, but we do need to get a bag of holding or two. They hold about 500 pounds, don't they? Yes. How much is the weight of uh, of all these gold? 
Four hundred pounds. Four hundred. We were told. Yep, they're platinum yep. trade bars, so you would have to convert them into gold coins someplace. But much easier than a chest full of gold coins. I mean, they'd have been in there counting all afternoon. Well, let's go find a shop that sells bags of holding. Okay. What is the price of a bag of holding? Well, it's not uncommon. Very expensive. It's just yeah. 500, I think. Okay. You guys can find a bag yeah, of I mean, holding in town. Can't. You can. Oh. Can we find five? Uh, let's ask. Uh. That's probably a stretch. Um, <laughs> let's say that there is a 10% chance you could find more than one. Because it is uncommon. Come on, Chowski. Do your stuff. Excuse me? Or uh, roll your percentage, guys. Right. Yeah, roll under 10. Ah. Oh, yes! What? Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I'll be damned. Okay, there are two bags of holding. But you know what? There's 600 gold pieces apiece. There. You know what? I feel generous today. Yeah. Do you now? So you need to subtract. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will buy one of them for myself because I have enough platinum to do that. Okay. Which I probably may have found um, elsewhere. Um. Uh... And we will uh, have uh, 60 gold pieces to remove from the 40,000, which were paid at the... We need to change some of these bars, aren't we, to actually use pay for gold. Oh, yeah, right. So for the moment, I will uh, l lend uh, 60 gold pieces to the party. There are two bags of holding yeah. in the party sheet. Yeah, I will buy one of those with my own cash. Yeah, and I'll buy the other one with my own cash. Okay. So the way God we'll damn it. <laughs> the way we'll treat uh this large cache of cash is that uh you know for, for traveling purposes it is in trade bars. Um but uh you know, each trade bar is worth um, 500 gold pieces. So, as you will, take 500 gold piece chunks out of that whenever you want to tap into it, and we'll just say that it's been converted to gold for, you know, don't want to get caught up in the minutia of all that stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Can you identify these bags for us, please? Uh, yes, I can do that. So, are me and Lucia splitting that between our inventory and then doling it out as much as other people can carry? Because if it's stuck in the party sheet, then you won't be able to distribute other findings. Yep, that's right. You won't be able to distribute the... The, the cash will all be distributed at one time or another. Uh, let me look at... Uh... Effectively 16 bars each, isn't it? So what are we adding? Twenty thousand gold pieces to our inventories. Twenty thousand and two between us, unless anybody wants to take like a lump sum from that now. I'll take uh, two bars, so I have a thousand. Um, it will. I uh, will take. Uh, I will need depending on. Uh, on what we can find in terms of uh, high level shops in town, uh, some bars, depending on uh, what kind of magical items I may be able to, uh, to purchase. Well, does everybody want to take a thousand gold each? And then me and 
Wachowski split the rest between us. Yeah, okay. To hold, yeah. Sounds fine, well, as long as Wachowski doesn't run off of it. <laughs> they know you, Ren. Yeah, where would I... Yeah, that's never gonna happen. <clears throat> nah. hmm. Hmm. There you go. Your no. bags of holding are identified. So we each add uh, one thousand gold pieces. Yep. And then me and Machowski split thirty-five thousand between us. <laughs> Seventeen and a half each. Yeah, I'm, I'm agreeing with you, Jenthro, on that. That uh, you know, a bag of holding back in the day was, man, that was like finding fifty thousand gold pieces in itself. Um, yeah, some of the five E stuff just is just broken. But uh, there is nothing more boring than watching guys divvy up money. So let's take a quick break. I'm gonna put ten minutes. Up. Okay. 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 And. We'll be right back.